Sitting about Krishna, and he has a very nice way of, you know, teaching devotees about Krishna consciousness. And he is also very expert in speaking. Many have postponed his pastimes. I heard many of his classes. They are very beautiful, they are very enchanting devotees, and very much in touching heart. So you can, you are all fortunate that Maharaj is here, and hopefully you all enjoy his class. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for coming. Let's give a round of applause for him again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare 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 Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. It's a new style of wearing mask around your chin. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Wear yeah, I know. In case you're wondering why there's two microphones, it's not ostentatious. It's this is live stream and this is temple room. Which one you want? Huh? Which one you want both? Yeah, that's what he said. So I'm just doing what he said. I salute to the chief. Whatever the chief says. As long as people. That's uh, somebody playing. Madanga, so I've seen Jai Radha Madhava. Jai Radha Madhava, Kunjabi Hadi Jai Radha Kunjabi Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Vrajadi 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 Yamsodanandana <laughs> Ya
Swami Shila Prabhupada Gora Premanandi Would you like to know a secret? It's a secret. You can't tell anybody. Here's the secret. When there's a Sunday program and the speaker sings Jairadava, Jairadha Madhava, it's really easy to tell who the new people are because they don't know the words. So that tells the speaker, I kind of have to make sure that there's introductory remarks because this is going to be a little up there. I hope that's okay. But I'll, you know, start slowly because it may require a little background. But while I've been in the suburbs, we've been discussing chapters from 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. It's been very nice. Krishna Kata. Topics about Krishna and topics about Krishna and topics about... I wake up in the morning. I don't know what my dreams are about because I'm asleep, but dream, waking up in the morning thinking about Krishna. Very nice. And so this topic is not about Krishna, but it's about one of Krishna's associates whose expansion takes part in Lord Chaitanya's Leela. Now, for the newer people here, who is Lord Chaitanya? So you know who is Krishna, right? Yeah. So Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, and you were invited to take a copy of Bhagavad Gita home with you. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, there's a concluding instruction. What's that concluding instruction? All the other things I've told you before, if I say it in Sanskrit, I'll lose them. All the nice teachings of yoga and this and that and the other thing, they're, they're subordinate to one thing. They're meant to bring one to one thing. What's that one thing? Surrender unto me. And if you surrender unto me, all base is covered. Anything, any mistakes you may have made in the course of your life, in many lifetimes, slate is clean. Don't worry. Surrender unto me. And after some time, Krishna spoke that. Towards the end of his 125 years, and after he departed, it marked the end of the present, the end of the previous age, Dwarpa Yoga, and then came this age, dark age, age of quarrel and strife. You noticed, right? Quarrel and strife, Kali Yuga. So Krishna began to consider how people are going to understand how to surrender unto me. There isn't a better way than I'll come myself and teach the way of how to. So he came. And that's who is Lord Chaitanya. On the altar, those of you that are newer, you can see the center altar. See the center altar? Lord Chaitanya on one side and Lord Nityananda on the other side. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are non-different than Krishna, and his brother, who? Balaram. Krishna and Balaram. Krishna had a brother in his pastimes in Dwarka. He had a brother. Well, his pastimes in childhood also, he had a brother. Balaram was his brother. Now let's go back to the spiritual sky. In the spiritual sky, 
there's four primary personalities that are in the entourage of Krishna. Krishna and Balaram, and there's two others. Is that good? Better? <laughs> Is it strawberry or vanilla? Okay. No chocolate. Krishna and Balaram, and there's two more. In the spiritual sky, there's two other expansions of Krishna and Balaram that are essential. Young lady in the red dress, could you move out of the way because there's a new person right behind you and I want to have eye contact so I can make sure we're connecting here. So, no, you're okay. I can see you. It's just eye contact is fine. Okay. Unless somebody else sits in front of you. So, Krishna Balaram, then there's two others. Pradumna and Aniruddha. Pradumna appeared when Krishna appeared as Krishna's first son. And Aniruddha appeared as the son of Pradumna. So these are called Chatur, means four. Chatur Bhuha. Four essential ex Bhuha expansions of the original person. I'm explaining this because that's who this person is. In, in, in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, there's Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. And one of those four is this personality. This personality in Krishna's Leela or in the spiritual world is Aniruddha. That means he's not Jiva. He's another category. A Vishnu Tattva category. He is a very exceptional person. And yesterday was his appearance day, so I thought it might be a nice topic to speak about for Krishna Pandit. So that's our topic. He appeared, as did Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, 500 and something years ago, whatever that number is now, 540 or something like that years ago, in a uh, part of India, in northeast India, West Bengal, and Vrakreshra Pandit was an intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. It is said, Lord Krishna personally entered Vrakreshra Pandit's body and caused him to dance in constant ecstasy for 72 continuous hours. Can anybody do that that you know? I mean, very athletic person. They can dance for a while. 72 hours. And not just like, like we were doing. Ecstatic, like otherworldly ecstatic. How many days is 72 hours? Three, Three days. Nonstop. He was empowered. He was... Another category of living entity besides jiva like us, and he was ecstatic beyond any worldly person's capacity. And when Lord Chaitanya would have kirtan, you see in the painting, there's Lord Chaitanya dressed in blue as Lord Nityananda, and then some of the other associates of Lord Chaitanya, and Vakreshra Pandit would dance in ecstasy of love of God, nonstop. Lord Chaitanya said about him, if I have only one wing like you, but if I had another, I certainly, I would fly in the sky. And that's one of the characteristics of Vakrishna Pandit, that, but we're going to hear some more about him. According to one of the biographies, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Bhagavad, Rakeshra Pandit reside, resided in three of the holy places, three of the Dhams, Vrindavan. Next one. 
Mayapur. Next one, Jagannath Puri. I think the slides got mixed up here. Let me just... Yeah. Okay. That's okay. The slide is missing, but that's life. Okay. So when he resided in Vrindavan, one of the places that it's known where he resided in Vrindavan, what's Vrindavan? For those of you that are newer, Vrindavan is where Krishna appeared. Before he spoke Bhagavad Gita, he appeared in Vrindavan. And many, 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 many very deeply dedicated devotees of Krishna resided in Vrindavan. One of those places that they liked to reside and still like to reside is at Radhakund. Radhakund is at the north end of Govardhan Hill. Again, for newer people, it's like, these are too many names, but it's a hill that was part of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. You know that one. Oh, okay, great. When he was seven years old. So at the north end, there's Radhakund and Shamakund. And right on one of the corners of Radhakund, there's a temple that Vikreshwar Pandit established called a Radha Kanta temple. It shows the location. And there's a photograph of a painting that's on the wall. Inside, when you go inside, it's very small, but you'll see the main altar that's pictured on the right. And up above is Rakeshwar Pandit in the winter. <laughs> He's all bundled up. And because it's cold in Vrindavan in the winter. Colder than Alachua in the winter. Colder than Atlanta, excuse me. And down below is Rakeshwar Pandit in the summer. Now let's take a close look at the altar. Look at this. Krishna has two flutes. That's Radha Kanta. Radha, Radha Kanta. And by his right side or our left side, that's the Lita. And over there on our left, or the deities far right, is Mahaprabhu. So these are deities that are that have the same name as the deities that were worshipped in Puri. You'll hear some more when we get to Puri. But right now we're in Vrindavan. Beautiful deities, huh? Now, I don't know the story behind why he has two flutes, but he has two flutes. There's probably a story behind it. Here's the painting that's on the wall, and it looks a little faded, but... I was able to capture a very close-up image, and it's really beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. Small place. So, Rukeshwar Pandit spent some time in Vrindavan, at Radhakund at least, and other places as well. Here's Rukeshwar Pandit in Navadweep. In Navadweep, there's a pastime connected with the Smarta Brahmin named Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit was a resident of Kulia. Kulia was given the name, and you see the deity that's a Braha deity. Um, it was given the name because long, long ago, Lord Braha appeared to a Brahmana named Vasudeva who was worshipping Lord Varaha, and Varaha kindly appeared. And uh, the Brahmana was in ecstasy, he nearly fainted, and he worshipped a deity, not this deity, of Lord Varaha, and he named the island after Varaha, because the local name for Kola, or for boar, is Kola. Varaha is a boar form of the deity. So Devananda Pandit was a resident of Kulia. That's a city in Kuladweep. And he was a very charismatic speaker. And he was especially fond of speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Unfortunately, unfortunately, although he was a good speaker and he liked Srimad Bhagavatam, he hadn't heard Srimad Bhagavatam in disciplic succession. And he wasn't as refined as one who's a speaker of the Bhagavatam should be. So one day, he was such a, an attractive speaker that there's a big audience outside of the place where he was speaking. And one day, Srivas Pandit came by. Srivas Pandit is one of the essential members of Lord Chaitanya's entourage. One of five. I'm holding up five fingers. He was this one. No, he was this one. The, the, the Panchatattva Mantra, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, slow, slow, slow down, slow down. We have new people here. Be kind to the new people. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, and Srivas. So one day, if you happen to go to Mayapur, you'll see those five. And they're humongous, like bigger than human, bigger than life, really big. And Srivas is one of those deities because he's one of the essential associates of Lord Chaitanya. Narada Muni in Krishna Lila. Narada Muni is a very important person in Krishna Lila. Srivas was a very important person in Lord Chaitanya's Lila. So Srivas just happened to be passing by when Devananda Pandit was speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. There's different versions, but one version says just hearing the topics of Srimad Bhagavatam, he fell into a swoon of ecstasy. One version says he was crying loudly, just in ecstasy, hearing the pastimes of Krishna from the Bhagavatam. Another says he started rolling on the ground in ecstasy. In either case, the persons who are, you know, the chaperones are keeping order there. They didn't understand what was up. So they literally picked him up and carried him out and escorted him off the property. Devan Pandit said nothing. Srivas wasn't offended. He made nothing. He said nothing. He went back to his home and worshipped his deities and carried on very nicely. But the omniscient Lord Chaitanya, he knew that Devananda Pandit had offended Srivas. So he later scolded him strongly. And some time passed. And one day, Vrakeshwara Pandit was in Navadweep and there was a kirtan. So what would Vrakeshwara Pandit do during kirtan? He would dance ecstatically for hours and hours and hours and hours. So there was a big crowd of people watching. It wasn't just like fancy dancing. It was prema with tears and ecstasies and Devananda Pandit just happened to be walking by and he saw the whole scene, and he was so charmed that he was a strong person. He had a, a walking stick. He held the stick up to move the audience, the crowd back, so Vakreshwar Pandit could dance and dance and dance and dance. And when the kirtan was ended, he invited Vakreshwar Pandit to come to his home and accept alms and take his meal. And from that day, Prakashara Pandit speaking Srimad Bhagavatam to Devananda Pandit, who is the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, he came to understand that I don't understand Srimad Bhagavatam. And then Prakashara Pandit started to describe to him the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his non difference from Krishna. And because Vrakeshwara Pandit was such an elevated, powerful, pure devotee, Devananda Pandit realized his past mistakes. And then later, when Lord Chaitanya came again to 
Kulia or Kola Dweep. He, Devananda Pandit, approached Lord Chaitanya, begged forgiveness. Lord Chaitanya said, the only way you can receive forgiveness from me is you get forgiveness from Srivas because he's the one that you offended. No problem. He was ready to go profuse apologies to Srivas. No problem for Srivas to forgive him. And everything was nice. And how did it become nice? For Krishna Pandit. Now this afternoon, no, yeah, this afternoon we heard about Dvidvita Gorilla. Oh. Ram for us smiling. David Vida, listen to this. According to scriptures, and Acharyas confirm, David Vida had a brother, and his name was Minda, and David Vida and Minda, listen to this, they were sons of the Ashvani Kamaras, who were royal physicians, and they were intimate associates of Lord Ramachandra. Jiva Goswami goes further and says that they are in Ayodhya in the spiritual sky. But a partial manifestation of them descended to take part in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as sons of the Ashwini Kumaras. But to teach people about the risk of offense, Lord Chaitanya had Dvidvita make an offense. The offense was Proud of his strength, Dvidvita was, he didn't give the details, but he offended Lakshmana because of the pride of his strength. Doesn't say what he did or said or anything. But because of that offense, what's the consequence of offense? Everybody that's been around a while will know. Something goes in the heart. It's, it's worse than sin is offending a Vaishnav. And a... Aparad results in anarchis of the heart because of that impurity of his heart. Later, he became susceptible to bad association. He fell into the association of, of, association of Narakasura, and he also became an Asura. What a fall. For those of you who have been around a while, this will make some sense to you. Jiva Goswami says it's comparable to giant Vijay falling from the spiritual sky. Due to Lord, the Lord wanted to teach the risk of offense. So here, look what Devananda Pandit did. He offended Srivas Thakur as one of the five essential associates of Lord Chaitanya. And he was relieved by Vakrasha Pandit by his kindness and compassion and elevated nature. I mean, it started with his dancing, but it, it was his spiritual strength and his deep understanding, profound understanding of the Bhagavatam and his love for Lord Chaitanya that mitigated that association, mitigated his very grave, the consequence of the grave offense of Vaishnava Parad for a very elevated Vaishnava. Too bad Dvidvita didn't have that good opportunity. But Devananda Pandit did by the grace of Vakrasha Pandit. Now we're going to hear something about Vakrasha Pandit in Puri. You with me? We so far we've been into Vrindavan. We've been to Navadweep. Now we're going to Puri. So listen carefully. <clears throat> Amongst Lord Chaitanya's associates, there were two that were particularly intimate with him. They were Ramananda Roy. And the other one, Sarup Damodar. Sarup Damodar. Sarup Damodar is described in Jaiva Dharma. What's Jaiva Dharma? Jaiva Dharma is a book by Bhaktivedo Thakur. The English translation is The Religion of All Souls. I'm just going to read a little section. It mentions Vakrasura Pandit's name. Sri Chaitanya instructed Srila Sarup Damodar to disseminate rasa upasana. What's that? The process of bhajan, devotional service, inculcated with rasa, 
Accordingly, he composed his diaries on Rasa Upasana, comprising two sections. What's that? Antha. Antha. The, the esoteric internal means of attainment. Attainment of Rasa. And Bahi. Pantha, the exoteric or external means of attainment. The esoteric process was entrusted to Srila Raghunath Das Goswami as amply exhibited in his books. And the exoteric rasa upasana was allocated to Srila Vrakeshra Pandit, which is the treasure of our spiritual lineage. This exoteric rasa upasana was passed on to me by Srila Vrakeshara Pandit and from me to Sri Dhyana Chandra who has compiled it in a padati with a padati it's a systematic step by step method of practice so I'll be, uh, just a little sharing um, I just got through giving a I don't know 15, 20 hours, something like that, seminar on one of these two. One of these two is by Raghunath Das Goswami. It's the internal process or esoteric. Esoteric can mean something like mis mystical, but it means something that's a cultivation of bhakti within. Mana, shiksha. Mana means mind, and shiksha means instructions. So it's 11 instructions, it's pretty short. Instruction, my dear mind. And he instructs his mind on the teachings that Raghunath Das received from Srubh Damodar. So for our new people, who's Raghunath Das? All these names, like too much, too many names. Raghunath Das, for those of you that have been around a while, you know, He's one of the essential Goswamis of Vrindavan that received teachings from Lord Chaitanya. They resided in Vrindavan and propagated those teachings of bhakti from Vrindavan, meant for the world, meant for us, so many generations later. Raghunath Das, quick, he was born in a family that was one of the wealthiest families in all of India. So like America, it's the Rockefeller family, say. He was the son of Mr. Rockefeller. Or in India, maybe Birla, or some other big name like that, Tata or something. You know, super, mega wealthy. Mega wealthy. He was, the son, he was the only son, and he was due to receive all of the wealth of family because he was the eldest and the only son. He had no interest. He left. It was a difficult journey, but he left, and he spent 16 years in the final pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, intimately associating with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu under the guidance of Srubh Damodar. It was so intimate with Srubh Damodar that he was known as the Raghu of Srubh because in Puri at the time, there were many Raghunaths, so they had different nicknames. He was the Raghu of Swarup, which means Swarup Damadar, he knew everything about the internal life of Lord Chaitanya. Wow. He knew everything about his moods, about his ecstasies. He knew exactly what verses to recite from scripture and sang them to augment the moods of Lord Chaitanya's ecstatic love for Krishna. He was his constant, Lord Chaitanya's constant companion and Raghunath Das was under his full instruction. So that means whatever Sarup Damodar understood, he explained it to Raghunath and he wrote it in his diaries and his diaries were later carried by Raghunath Das to Vrindavan and passed on to Krishna Das Kaviraj, which he relied on heavily for composing Chaitanya Charitamrita, Raghunath Das. So he's a very important person. 
a little skinny book, but it's a very powerful book. And that was the internal or the esoteric, the exoteric means. In the course of 24 hours, there's many things that you do during this hour, that hour, the other thing, the other thing, the other thing, and then you do it the next day. It's external thing to help cultivate rasa or spontaneous devotion. And Jaiva Dharma is called the jewel of our lineage. So who did Srup Damodar give that to? Vrakeshra Pandit. You gave it to Vrakeshra Pandit. Now we're going to hear, and this is in Jaiva Dharma, as you see, that's the cover of one of his books, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. The one that Vrakeshra Pandit gave to was his, his disciple Gopal Guru. Gopal Guru, in turn, gave it to Jnana Chandra. You see on the last, next to the last line, Jnana Chandra. You can see his name again. He wrote, he wrote it all down as a, as a padati. You'll hear about it a couple times more. But this, mentioning it because it's something that received by Vrakeshra Pandit from, directly from Srubhdamadar, received it directly from Lord Chaitanya. So it's very special. Uh, Vrakeshra Pandit was a very special person. Now, we're with Vrakeshra Pandit in Puri, and uh, while he was in Puri, there was a deity that was being worshipped by one of Lord Chaitanya's dear associates, uh, Kashi Mishra. Now, what happened... You like Goralila? You're smiling. Right in the front row here. You like Goralila. I can tell. It's like, ooh, you like it. <laughs> Me too. Who, the, the king, when Lord Chaitanya was living in Puri, there was a king. The king of Orissa. And he presided also in Puri. His name was? King Prataparudra. King Prataparudra had a father, like most of us do. And uh, his name was King Purushottam Dev. So King Purushottam Dev, when he was the king, he uh, had a battle with the king of Kanchi, and he won. And he brought back many deities as part of the victory spoils. And one of those deities was the deity that you see in this photograph is uh, Sri Radhakanta. He placed it in the temple, the Jagannath temple. Have you been to the Jagannath temple? No? Someday. You'll get to go in. I can't go in. But you'll get to go in when you go, one day. King Prataparudra later was requested by his guru, so Prataparudra was the, the son of Purushottam Dev. Prataparudra had a guru. His guru's name was Kashi Mishra. Kashi Mishra asked the king, I'd like that deity to, to worship in my residence. So he took the deity out of the temple and gave it to Kashi Mishra. And Kashi Mishra entrusted the worship of Sri Radhakanta to Vrakeshra Pandit's disciple. His disciple, Gopal Guru. Vrakeshra Pandit himself never acted as the Acharya at Radhakanta Mat. Rather, he stayed absorbed in Kirtan and dancing in the company of Mahaprabhu because that's what he liked. <laughs> He was ecstatically good at it. So after some time, so Gopal Guru was entrusted with the worship. On behalf of Kashi Mishra, and Kashi Mishra um, allowed Gopal Guru to add some deities to that original deity. You see the additional deities over here is Mahaprabhu. There's Shrimati Radharani. 
and you know who is over on that side. Lalita, Lalita, and Radha, and Mahaprabhu. And I believe that's Lord Nityananda on the far side. He's a little shorter than everybody else. Now, you see some deities over here on the right side. We're going to see those deities on the right side. Um, this is the altar at a different time of the day. Very beautiful deities. And over to this side, we're going to see the rest of those deities also. Another deity dressing. It's not easy to get photos. Like, they're really... This is one of the places they don't allow photos. I won't tell you how I got them. We got some photos. So Radha, Radha Kanta, and over to the side, there's a whole series of other Radha Krishna deities that are worshipped daily. And they were worshipped by Srila Gopal Guru Goswami. His, this Murti that you see a photo of, is in the temple room, and you can take a photo of that deity that's okay with the people there. Now, before he was known as Gopal Guru, by birth, his name was Makaradwaj Pandit. But there you see a little boy holding his tongue, and there's a reason. The reason he was, Go uh, Mahaprabhu just nicknamed him Gopal, but after the following event, he became popularly known as Gopal Guru. Little boy, he saw one Brahmin running to the toilet, holding his tongue. He asked the Brahmin, what are you doing? He said, well, I don't want to go to the toilet while I'm chanting the holy name. So I, my tongue always chants, so I have to hold my tongue. And the little boy scolded him and corrected him. You can't contaminate the holy name. You can take the holy name anywhere. And the holy name purifies, it doesn't become contaminated. And supposing you leave your body while you're defecating, then what's going to happen? You have a big problem. <laughs> and people heard little boy scolding this, you know, elevated Brahmana. I mean, one who is, has to hold his tongue to have it stop chanting. But he was <laughs> performing the function of guru. So he, from that time on, Makara Dwaj Pandit was not just Gopal, but Gopal Guru. And uh, the deity of Radha, Radha Kanta, is in what's called the House of Kashi Mishra. But those of you who have been to the House of Kashi Mishra, it's like a palace, not a house. Even like a big, big suburban houses that are really like oversized big, it's much bigger than that. Really big. And, and one of the places in this house of Kashi Mishra is the very small residence. Here's the entrance to the house of Kashi Mishra. And inside is that little small place where Lord Chaitanya resided, known as Gambira. And inside Gambira, there are some artifacts that Lord Chaitanya personally used. From the time of Gopal Guru, Mahaprabhu's wooden shoes you see over on our left, uh, a quilt, which is in that box, um, and made by either Srub Damada or Jagatananda Pandit. And there's also a water pot, clay water pot that Mahaprabhu used. And th those art articles that you see there, they're in now in a little case over on the left side as we're looking. And um, that's the sitting place of Mahaprabhu in Gambira. And here's another photograph they covered with some kind of material so that the items wouldn't decay. When Gopal Guru was very young, Gopal, still Gopal, there was another devotee named Abhiram Thakur who came to visit. Abhiram Thakur had a, a reputation that besides being a very elevated person, as you see over here, this is a book about his life. This is the painting. He, in Krishna Leela, was Sridham. Hmm. Who is Sridham? Sridham is Radharani's elder brother. 
that shall be wrong. So he had this capacity of being able to test devotees and Shandagram Shilas. Some of you that are newer, you don't know what a Shandagram Shila is. Everybody else does. It's a, a stone that may be as big as, you know, like half the size of your fist, black, kind of smooth. And it's uh, found in a special place in Nepal that's already installed deity. So what Abhiram Thakur would do is he would come before the deity and pay his obeisances. And if it wasn't really a Shalagram Shila, it would break. And if somebody was known to be an elevated devotee, he had come to pay obeisances, and if they were fake, their head would crack. People were afraid of Abhiram Thakur, I tell you. And these fakers were afraid. But when Abhiram Thakur came to visit in Puri, he, wa- he heard about Gopal, and he wanted to come check him out. So what did Gopal do? He climbed up in the lap of Lord Chaitanya and cried. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya just embraced him. Abhiram Thakur came anyways, paid his obeisances, and his head didn't crack. He was the real thing. One of the contributions that you may know about already is he was very accomplished in chanting of Japa. And one of the practices he had in chanting of Japa was, is called Trataka. Trataka. Trataka means engraved in stone. He would sit before a stone that had the Maha Mantra and his eyes would follow the letters as he chanted the mantra. That was one of his practices. Again, the slides are out of order, but here's the slide, the Trataka slide. But, you know, it was in local, probably Orient script, maybe Bengali script, maybe Sanskrit script, but that's a practice that he established. When he was there, according to one of the biographies called Bhakti Ratnakar, Naratam Das Thakur came to Puri and he met Gopal Guru and they had a wonderful interaction. Doesn't give details, it just says in Bhakti Ratnakar that they met. Later, um, when Gopal Guru was to leave his body, uh, he had a disciple named Dhyana Chandra. We saw his name before, right? Remember? Dhyana Chandra. His name was listed down here. He wrote the Padati that gave the teachings that Srup Damodar gave to Vakreshra Pandit, gave to Gopal Guru. Dhyana Chandra wrote it down. We'll see a copy of that book in just a moment. And Dhyana Chandra was in big anxiety when his guru left. But moreover, Gopal Guru had been entrusted with the property of Kashi Mishra, but the paperwork with the municipality wasn't done properly. So when Gopal Guru's body was at the funeral place by the Swarga Dvara, the municipality came and wanted to take over the temple and the deities. So what happened? Drama, that's what happened. Dhyana Chandra went to the funeral pyre and grasped the body of his guru and started crying. Gopal Guru came to external consciousness. He went back, executed the documents, and went back to the funeral pyre. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Then, about a year or two later, he, some devotees, some devotees from Puri were visiting in Vrindavan. And when they were visiting in Vrindavan, they went to Vangshivat. Vangshivat is a very celebrated place where Krishna played upon his Vangshi flute and called the gopis to perform rasa dance. It's one of the rasa dance places. 
So when they went to Vangshivat, who did they see there? Rukeshwara Pandit. No, excuse me, Gopal Guru. Gopal Guru. So they couldn't believe it. <laughs> they, they told, they went back and told Gopal Guru, your, your Guru, excuse me, Dhyana Chandra, your Guru was there. Two years, something like that, after he had actually left. He's a very mystical person. It wasn't an apparition, it was Rikreshwar Pandit performing bhajan at Vangshivat. There's a nice photograph of Vangshivat. So in, um, because of his celebrated um, nature, there's a samadhi of Gopal Guru in the same hall where the deity of Sri Sri Radha Radhakanta are worshipped in Puri. Here's a, a Bengali version of the book that Dhyana Chandra wrote. It's Gora Govinda Charana Govinda Charana Govinda Archana, excuse me, Padati. Govinda Archana Padati. Gora Govinda Archana Padati. This is this step by step by step practice. I'll tell you a little Bhakti Siddhanta story. Here's the Bhakti Siddhanta story. We're almost done. Many of you know who is Bhakti Siddhanta. Some of you may be newer and you don't know who is Bhakti Siddhanta. Our founder Acharya is a murti of our founder Acharya is here on the Vyasa sign in the back, Prabhupada. Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta. Bhakti Siddhanta. The Bhakti Siddhanta, one of the things that he did was some years he spent 30 days in Vrindavan doing Braj Mandal Parikram. That means they went to all the holy places of Krishna's pastimes with many, many, many followers. And in the evening, he would give a lecture. For several days, Bhakti Siddhanta, because there's many places to visit, gave lecture at Radhakund. Radhakund is a very sacred place, very elevated place for Krishna's pastimes. And every evening he spoke on Ishupanishad. Because his followers were expecting something, you know, very esoteric, very elevated, very high. He just spoke on Ishupanishad for several days. At the end of those several days, the next evening, he mentioned this book and said, this book is quoting his father, Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod. It's the jewel of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, but to enter into it, one has to be qualified. And therefore, he explained, we followers of Lord Chaitanya accept what Raghunath Das gave. What Raghunath Das gave is the same as what Krishna Das Kaviraj gives in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it's what we should follow if and when that day comes when we become very, let's say three varies, very, very, very elevated then we may consider this one. But if we're not qualified, it becomes a cheap imitation. And that is going on to this day. Here's a verse about chanting. This is the last slide. This is taken from his book because part of his book is, some, is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The mantra firmly situated in the mind, the mind firmly situated in the mantra. Such a seamless connection of the mind and the mantra is the characteristic of ideal japa. So I'm going to be giving a, a little, kind of, like a, kind of like a japa retreat. We're calling it Festival of the Holy Name. This is going to be one of the features, is this particular verse, you know, called mindfulness. Mindful, you know, mindfulness, everyone knows that phrase. This is it straight from um, Srup Damodar to Vakreshra Pandit to Gopal Guru to Dhyana Chandra to us when we become qualified. Now we can do this part, that's not a problem. We can try to do this part, that's not a problem. 
Doing this part requires, there's some purity involved. And uh, that that's something about the life of a Krishna Pandit. And uh, if you, you know, you'll, you'll find those of you that like reading Prabhupada's books, you can certainly read Chaitanya Charitamrita and you'll find these nice descriptions, some of these nice descriptions, particularly the exchange with um, Devananda Pandit and so forth. He's a very important person in our line. Yesterday was his appearance day. So I thought, let's talk about Prakrishna Pandit at the Atlanta Temple for the Sunday program. For those of you that are newer, this may be too many names, like how do you process all these names? But it's the, it's the essence that's important. It's not who's who and what's what and all that. So let's see if there's some discussion. And again, apology for two microphones, but this is live stream. And this is the temple room. Comments or questions? Anyone would like to discuss something? Do we have an extra microphone? What do we do? Do we give him this one? Yeah? Oh, you can speak loud. Yeah, you don't need a mic. Okay. Let's go. So, in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world. Krishna has his leela. Krishna has his leela. Lord Chaitanya has his leela too. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Thank you. It's described that Goloka is in quadrants. That means four. Vrindavan, Mathura, Dwaraka, and Svetadweep. Look closely, devotees, look closely at some of the cover paintings of Canto 1 Bhagavatam. Look closely and you'll see depiction of Krishna and Vrindavan, depiction of Krishna and Matra, depiction of Krishna in Dwaraka. And look closely and you'll see Lord Chaitanya in the Sankirtan party in Goloka. So Sweta Dweep is part of Goloka and Lord Chaitanya's eternal abode is in Goloka, in that Svetadvi portion of Goloka. And the associates, don't ask me what the technology is, but the associates of Lord, supposing you become a pure devotee. Somebody here may become a pure devotee. And if you become a pure devotee through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, here's what happens. You take part in Krishna's pastimes and Lord Chaitanya's pastimes simultaneously. Now, don't ask me how, because it's not described how. But um, the, the mercy of Lord Chaitanya is very special. The mercy of Lord Chaitanya gives one the mercy of Srimati Radharani, which gives one the mercy of Krishna. And in that way, you can take. We, such pure devotees, take part in both simultaneously. And that's in the spiritual world, in Krishna Loka, in the spiritual world. Lord Chaitanya is there with his associates performing wonderful Sankirtan. Rakesha Pandit must be there dancing ecstatically. <laughs> Something else? Anyone else? Letting me off easy. Okay. Hare Krishna. The, you know Aniruddha? The, uh, the chapter of Yuha. You've, you've been around, so you know when I say chapter of Yuha, you're not bewildered. Vasudev Sankarshan Pradumna Aniruddha. He's Aniruddha. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is that a problem for you? No. Aniruddha. He's not a gopi. He's Aniruddha. He's Vishnu Tattva. He's not a gopi. Is that all right? Okay. I see a hand in the back. Uh, how loud are you? Oh, I can't hear you. What? Yeah, Kali Yuga is getting very strong. What's the difference now? What, what, what should we do? Chant louder. Yes. You want to hear a nice story? Mataji? Oh, Mataji. You want to hear a nice story about chanting louder? T today, in the U.S. and in China, they're observing the disappearance day, no, the appearance day, the Vyasa Puja day of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. So here's a Tamal Krishna Maharaj story. You ready? Mataji, you got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. You got to pay. You, you can't pay attention. Okay, I'm not going to tell the story. I'm waiting for her attention. Okay. Long ago. Yes. That's a good one. Long ago, Tamal Krishna was visiting in Fiji and the devotees were not properly respecting their neighbors. So they had loud amplification in the temple room, put speakers in the windows and blasted out kirtan all over the place. Well, there was a lawyer in the neighborhood and the lawyer was connected politically so that lawyer complained to the government that the Hare Krishna people are, are a nuisance, making all this noise. Tamal Krishna Maharaj visited. He requested that lawyer to come see him. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj, being the personality he was, he said, I, I'll, I, I'll make you an offer. Tell me if you're willing to accept this, a deal. The deal is... You take part in the practice of devotional service just as we do for one month. Chant 16 rounds, take only prasadam, attend Mangalarti, do the same program for one month. And if you don't change your point of view, if you, if you don't change your point of view, I'll shut the temple and we'll leave Fiji. And if you do feel that the process is impacting you, then you promise me that you write a letter to the municipality and all the people and correct that problem that you just made. He agreed. 15 days into that deal, he was convinced. And he became an initiated disciple. And his name is Nityananda Prabhu. So, we don't recommend putting your speakers outside the window. And, but the same thing that Prabhupada did, you and us and we can do, and that's propagate the congregational chanting of the Holy Name. Now, in modern times, it's done in different ways, in different forms, etc., etc., but the principle hasn't changed. Ask Malabhadra, he'll tell you all about it. Okay. Anything else? You ready for making your announcements? Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. I see two hands. Okay. How loud are you? Say, hey, take your mask down. I really don't know much about. I'm very. I'm 
You know about Krishna, but, but you don't know about Lord Chaitanya. Yeah. So what to do? But I'm not reaching where I want to. Sometimes I try and I fall. Welcome to the club. We have we have a we have a, a card that will give you a copy of. The card says, "I'm not there yet, club." You can be a card carrying member along with the rest of us. So now what? So what to do? The question is, what to do? Oh. Well, the process is simple. It's, it's applying the process. That's where it's difficult. <laughs> no, the process. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Bandhanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. Follow the process. Come to the temple. In your home, make your t home a temple. Offer everything to Krishna. You can, you know, it does not, it doesn't add to your cost. Anyway, it's just more lazy and distracted. Well, there's always something. Look, we, we've all been around a while and there's always something. If there ever going to be nothing, it's always going to be something. And if it's not something, then it's 10 somethings. So obstacles are part of the territory. So now what? Well, you, you, or you just rise above it. You smile. Okay, next. enters. <laughs> Uh, usually, they don't go to any other uh, planet, but uh, Mike mentioned that uh, one of the quadrants is Shweta Dvipa and Mahaprabhu and Sankirtan uh, partners are there. And then I've heard that uh, Mahaprabhu takes Sankirtan uh, uh, to every planet, one day one Vaikuntha Loka, one day another Vaikuntha Loka in every planet. And those who are followers of Mahaprabhu, they get to go to all planets in that army and perform Sankirtan. Fantastic. I never heard that one before. <laughs> Well, and also you quoted me as having some, said something I didn't say, but that's okay. <laughs> what happens, supposing you become a pure devotee, and then we'll, we want to follow you, you don't go right to Krishna Loka. What happens? You go to a place where Krishna is performing his Boma Leela, and you're trained up. You do an you know, apprentice job for a while. You're trained up by the Nitya Siddha devotees to train you how to become qualified to do that eternal service. And then when Krishna's Leela completes, then you go to Goloka. An apprenticeship before. And you then, and there's other reasons too, without going into the other reasons. But this other one I've never heard. It's, it sounds attractive, it doesn't sound scary. Wherever Lord Chaitanya is, fantastic. If you can go to wherever Lord Chaitanya is, I'm following you. You have something? You want some Krishna Leela? Something? Okay. Well, because today is the appearance day of Lord Aniruddha, in Krishna Leela, there's two chapters that focus on Aniruddha. And one of them we discussed almost two and a half times, and that's Usha and Aniruddha. Who's Usha? Usha, Banasura's daughter. Who's Banasura? He's an Asura for sure, because he's, that's the second half of his name. But Bana was the son of Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj was the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj, who was his son? No. 
Virojana. Virojana's son was Bali, and Bali's son was Bana. He became bad through bad association. That's how you, if you want to get bad, just hang out with bad people. Or if you're a parent and you want to make sure your child spoils, make sure they go to bad association. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. So good association. But Banasura was really bad. Really, really bad. Who was he devoted to? Lord Shiva. He was so devoted to Lord Shiva that Lord Shiva gave him 1,000 arms. And once he had 1,000 arms, he was playing percussion while Lord Shiva was dancing on Mount Kailash. Lord Shiva was so pleased. You helped me with my dancing so nice. Take a benediction. Guard my city. He wanted service from his master. That's a no-no. He was proud. Some time passed. He's got these 1,000 arms. He wanted to have a big fight. He complained to Lord Shiva, I can't find an equal. Can you fight me? Lord Shiva was disgusted. But he didn't want to smash him himself. So he said, yes, you'll meet someone who will take away your pride and your arms. He was happy. Now I'm going to meet someone, I'm worthy competitor for me. Bana went away. When he went back to his palace, lo and behold, his daughter, Usha, was in her inner chambers was Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. How did he get there? It's a long story. Make a long story short. Usha was having a dream. And in her dream, there was this really attractive young man came in her dream and they were enjoying together and all of a sudden he disappeared. Then she woke up and called out, Oh, my beloved, where have you gone? And all of her friends went, what, What's going on? Usha, what's going on? So Usha had a dear friend named Chitra Leka. Chitra means she was really good at drawing. Really good at drawing. I mean, not like, she was really good at drawing. So Chitra Leka said, I can help you find that beloved man. I'll make drawing, and you can tell me which one was him. So in addition to being good at drawing, she was kind of like clairvoyant. She could see the faces and forms of demigods and great sages and human beings and people in distant places. And she made all these fantastic drawings. It's a long list. When she saw the drawing of Pradumna, she went. But then she drew Aniruddha. They looked very much alike, but they were distinguishing marks. And she said, that's him. So Chitraleka said, no problem. I'll bring him here. She had mystic power. She flew through the air. In the dead of night, she couldn't get into Dwaraka. Narada Muni to the rescue. <laughs> he gave Chitraleka secret mantras so she could enter into Dwaraka at night. She went straight to Aniruddha's bed. She lifted, he's this hero. She lifted him up and carried him right to Aniruddha, to Usha's inner chamber. Those from India, you know, unmarried girls don't have men in their inner chamber. Aniruddha was brought to her inner chamber by Chichaleka. Go ahead, enjoy together. So that's what they did. After some time, the guards, the attendants looking after Usha, detected symptoms on her body that she's engaged in amorous activities. They told Bana. Bana came with his 1,000 arms and weapons. And there he saw, what? There's a young man 
with my unmarried daughter? He freaked out. They did, they, that's not what the Bhagavatam doesn't describe it that way. He, he went ballistic, didn't say that either. So he had his armies come and attack. But Aniruddha was very powerful. He picked up his club, smashed them, broke their bones, broke their heads, dismembered their limbs. They went running. Banasura was very powerful. He had a mystical rope called a Pashupat. Naga Pashu. Naga Pashu? Naga Pashu. He tied him up with the Naga Pashu. Thank you. Aniruddha is missing for four months. Narada Muni to the rescue. Narada Muni went back to Dwaraka and said, you all missing Aniruddha? You want to know where he is? Anasura's got him locked up in jail. What? Aniruddha's in jail? Aniruddha's in jail? Bring the entire army from the Yadu dynasty. Go attack Banasura. And they came. They had a big, big, big battle. Long story. Short. Banasura lost. As he was being chopped by Krishna's Sudarshan Chakra. How many? 996 of his 1,000 arms were chopped. Krishna was ready to chop his head. Lord Shiva came forward and a petitioned Krishna to not do that. Krishna agreed. It was nice glorification and appreciation, but that was the punchline. Krishna said, I, I have no intent, listen to this, I have no intention of killing him because I made a promise, of course, is in, in Lord Nishringadev to Prahlad, but I made a promise to Prahlad that I will not kill any of your descendants. And he's one of your descendants, so I won't kill him. I had no intention of killing him, but I wanted to have him be relieved of his pride, as did you. So his pride is now gone, and he'll be by your side instead of having you guard his kingdom, he'll guard your kingdom. And he'll be in your service for a long, long time. And he'll be freed from fear. So after that, Aniruddha married Usha. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> And Lord Aniruddha, in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, is Vakrishya Pandit. And he liked to dance. And Lord Chaitanya liked his dancing. Okay? So, you want to take your microphone and do your thing? Uh,